Okay, thank you everybody for coming to this dev room. Thanks once again to our volunteers doing the amazing video camera work. There's a live stream, you can tweet about it if you want to. I'd like to introduce uh, Alexander Aring from Germany, who's going to talk about IEEE 4. Um, big round of applause, please, for Alexander. Hello, and uh, thanks for visiting my uh, talk today. I'm talking about the uh, current state of the IEEE 802. 15.4, I will uh, name it uh, IEEE.4, it's a really long name and I simply name it IEEE.4. Um, and six low pan stack inside the Linux kernel. My name is Alexander Aring and yeah, here we go on. So the topics of discussion, I want to, the first thing I want to talk a little bit about the project history. And then I want to uh, give you a little uh, introduction into the topic. And then I will talk about uh, the Linux implementation. Uh, future work and at the end of the talk I will uh, show you some uh, demo. So the project history. The project, histo uh, the project start in 2008, but the project has a name Linux uh, Zigbee. And uh, I think all you know what uh, Linux is, but what the hell is Zigbee? Um, the thing is we don't make any Zigbee in implementation in this project and some people uh, getting con confused and asking a lot of Zigbee uh, questions at the mailing list and but we don't make any Zigbee. Uh, Zigbee is uh, simply an um, an alternative uh, to uh, six low pen to running on top of the ITV.4. Uh, there were some license, license issues to, run the, uh, to bring the st Zigbee stack into the kernel space. So now we uh, like to implement uh, six low pan. That's an open standard and built, uh, based two on uh, IEEE.4. And additionally, we want to implement uh, some upper layer protocols for routing and application. So uh, the code is mainline si since year 2009. So introduction. The Mac layer is the IEEE.4 and stands for low rate wireless personal area network. On top of the IEEE.4, we run uh, six low pan, and six low pan is IPv6 over low power wireless personal area networks. That mainly there are two um, RFCs, which the, the first one describes the transmission of IPv6 packets over um, IEEE.4 networks, and the second one is something special, which describes uh, I, IPv6 header compression format. Uh, so the areas of applications are uh, sensor network and home and in the industrial automation. They are related work, they are assisting uh, ContigOS. ContigOS is another um, famous operating system in Internet of Things. And they have uh, the, the most, I, I will say, um, it's the most used uh, six low pen implementation. But ContigOS aims to run on 8-bit uh, microcontrollers and that's why they have a effort to make a small stack implementation. So we begin with the uh, uh, Linux implementation here. We This, this graphic shows basically how uh, I normal IPv6 uh, looks like. Uh, the first one, we have an application layer, then a socket layer, transport layer, and packet layer. On the bottom, we have the uh, Ethernet interface. So now the six low pan have no Ethernet uh, interface. I marked this in this red box here. Uh, we have two interfaces, um, low, a low pan interface and then a VPAN interface. It's the IEEE.4 interface. And in the middle of this, we have a six low pan adaption layer. That's uh, something magic. I will uh, describe it later. And um, the application layer from the user space side, we don't need to sh uh, change your uh, to change the user space application to run a uh, six low pan application. It's still a IPv6 application. You don't need to change it. So the what actually uh, what exactly does the six low pan adaption layer? The six low pen adaption layer compress is a compression format for the 30 bytes IPv6 header. 
There's uh, some fields, version, uh, traffic class, flow label, hop limit, and uh, mainly the addresses, which are uh, 32 bytes. And we can compress the link local and multicast address. So um, we can also remove the payload length. And what we are actually have is a small six low pen header of three bytes. So additionally, we can uh, compress the transport header. So uh, for example, UDP, which has normally uh, eight bytes, and uh, there assist a special port range, and we can also remove the checksum because the Mac layer handled this. And uh, the smallest UDP uh, six low pen header is then only five bytes long. Also a UDP with a IPv6. There's something else. Uh, a six low pan fragmentation on IEEE.4 we have uh, a MTU of 127 in, and we need to buy, provide a IP, uh, MTU in IPv6 which is 1280 and the fragmentation handling uh, fragments a lot of packets and we assemble this on the other side if we get a payload which is uh, higher than 127. So my experience issues, um, I start with the kind of version uh, 3.8 um, one year ago, and um, I tried to ping another node in a six low pen. That's the first thing which I wanted to um, bring to work. And this only works with non-link uh, local addresses. So there was something wrong with the uh, compression of the uh, link local address. and Fragmentation did only work on a Linux-to-Linux uh, -Linux communication. And sometimes while fra fragmentation, I also get some waste condition and the whole kernel uh, crashed <laughs> um, and need to be uh, restart. And the second thing was to, uh, was to run a UDP application. And in this UDP application, I got uh, sometimes a null pointer and it didn't work on the UDP port range with I already mentioned. So then I looked a little bit deeper into the code and I fixed something. Um, the IPv6 uh, header compression, uh, short IPHC, uh, did never work correctly. And I re-implement the uh, necessary function to uh, work correctly, like uh, what the RFC says. And uh, the UDP uh, compression and uncompression, I marked this red uh, because uh, they have some byte ordering issues. So somebody hacked this into the Linux kernel and never tested. So it looks very um, same like the Contiki OS stack. And uh, but I, this is already mainline and I, and I fixed it. And there was all, uh, also a problem with the uh, Mac layer header size, which is dynamically and um, there was some magic number which used a static header size value, which uh, uh, was wrong. So there are also uh, known existing issues, uh, six low pen uh, fragmentation. And this is currently mainline not RFC compliant and still having these race condition. So it's like Russian roulette, you, uh, <laughs> while you use the um, fragmentation and there's also uh, some issues with the acknowledge handling in the Mac layer. Uh, but I have uh, some patches for this, and um, which is RC compliant and having no race conditions anymore. I hope I uh, remove this because uh, the current the, uh, Linux has a IPv6 fragmentation API, and the current uh, implementation doesn't use it. So uh, the, the idea was to use the API, which also used by IPv6 and IPv4. Um, yeah. And what we have done now, also before, um, a ping to a Contiki device wasn't possible. Also to a Linux to Linux communication because the uh, link local uh, address uh, wasn't uh, hasn't a uh, wide uh, compression handling. 
And suddenly the kernel crashed. I already mentioned the, uh, frag uh, the fragmentation race conditions. And now we can use the link local address and our connection to a contiguous works. And the APHC, the IPv6 header conversion and fragmentation is mostly uh, RFC compliant, I hope. <laughs> and um, there's another thing, the Bluetooth 6 low pan, there's uh, a new standard, a new RFC. And it's it's not RFC yet, uh, but they share the IPv6 header compression format, and there's, um, there's currently uh, currently some mainline code in the Linux kernel, and we use some code sharing there. And I hope uh, we improve the six lopen implementation with that. So future work, um, six lopen upper layer protocols. That's um, yeah, RPL, that's uh, a routing protocol for low power and lossy uh, networks, and use IPv6 message. Uh, what does mean this is uh, based on IP, so you need to go to the, uh, through the IP layer, and they already assist our prototype implementation by Tony Chino. Uh, but uh, this uh, has some limited functionality and has a lot of uh, dependencies like uh, Python, it's requirements in Python, and there are a lot of uh, native bindings and also use uh, COMQ, which you <laughs> can see here. And another thing is the neighbor discovery optimization. We don't have um, a multicast Mac layer like uh, Ethernet. Ethernet has multicast, and we don't have it. Our multicast is a uh, is a log logical multicast over broadcast and they assist uh, RFC to optimize the neighbor discovery uh, protocol with that. Uh, but we need some great idea to implement it because I don't know if we can handle it in the sixth low pan adaption layer. Another protocol is Coop. Coop um, for, uh, is an application protocol and it's mainly uh, like a HTTP uh, HTTP for sensor network, but it's UDP based, and there's some uh, C implementation lib co-op, and I successful uh, used this on the Linux. And now we come to the demo. Well, uh, time. I want you to show um, my um, hardware. That's the IEEE.4 rec, USB rec. And the first one um, is a Contiki stick, which offers me a um, Ethernet device on the Linux, but it still uses the Contiki stick. And the second one is uh, from Kui hardware, uh, the AT USB which do not uh, don't run a Contiki stack, and I use Kuimu to uh, access this IEEE.4 uh, receiver. So I, I need to look up the uh, five size. I, I already uh, set up something, and I, I show you now uh, if config. And you'll see here uh, a low pan interface with a um, with a linked local address. The scope on the side uh, describes the uh, that's a linked local address and a global uh, link address. But the important thing is on the linked local address um, on the IEEE the IEEE dot four interface the VPN null uh, zero. Uh, we have a MAC, um, MAC address that's only AAA, 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 and the link local address is based on this MAC address. And when we do this, uh, we can full uh, elide the, uh, the address in, uh, address in the um, six uh, in the IPv6 header. Um, but I want to ping it now the um, the contiki stick. 
I will show you, so um, at first I will show you um, a co-op um, demo. I use uh, a co-op client that's uh, copper. Uh, on the URL you see the co-op and the uh, global link address. And I need to uh, and I ping and the remote response to the co-op. And I run here the simply the standard lib co-op example. And uh, I can run a discovery discovery um describes what the uh, what the co-op server uh, provides and it's some uh, tree ASCII description and rendered we uh, have something like this but we can get the time of the uh, system that's now February and then uh, change this time now um. to uh, 22.22. Now the time has changed and uh, co-op uh, is working. And now um, I show you a ping application, a ping example with fragmentation. And uh, you already see here um, the payload is over uh, 127, it's uh, 520, and um, fragmentation is working now. So, the time is five. Okay, then, uh, questions. Is there any? Yeah. Hi there, thank you for that. C could you make any comment on how Contiki or a similar kind of Internet of Things communication stacks can deal with uh, low power sensor nodes when necessarily the radio is going to be off most of the time. I mean, how would, would your ping work you in that context? You, you mean uh, some like uh, power management features? Store and forward of messaging or, or something like that. I mean, is there is there any kind of standardization on dealing with nodes that are asleep a lot of the time and therefore are deaf? Yeah, this, uh, I think it's the RPL protocol uh, provides some uh, sleeping modes and um, there's also some uh, beacon uh, beacon frames in the Mac layer. So you when you send a beacon in the sleep state of the uh, nodes. Uh, it's awake, and you can uh, you can uh, describe some uh, time slots, but that's Contiki has a Mac protocol called Contiki Mac, and puts the radio off for 99.9% .9 of the time. So that's that's done at the Mac layer. Yes, on the Mac layer. Yeah. Can I ask a question? I, I also had a question. Um, so if I understand correctly, so the Contiki uh, USB stick is the, the, the radio, gives you the radio functionality. So the IEEE 802.15.4. And then on the, on the Linux, in, in, on, on, in Linux you have the six low pan stack. And the IEEE.4 as well. So what do you have Contiki, the Contiki stick there? Yes, we want to um, bring a, a embedded device simply into the Internet of Things world. So mostly um, on an embedded device you have a IEEE.4 receiver it's, which offers uh, SPI and then you can connect it uh, a IEEE.4 receiver easily and then uh, you have you can make SSH or something else over it, and uh, yeah, you you don't need uh, a wireless. Okay. Any question? No.
I was just going to say this uh, it seems like a really cool project. What's sort of like the future of it, the sort of longer term future of it? Yeah, the future. Um, so I talked with some guy which uh, wants to implement uh, the IEEE dot four Mac layer, some uh, security option there, also some security option which is not uh, supported right now, and a lot of other things. It's, it's a lot of uh, to do, and <laughs> in the next time I own, I fixed the. Uh, the necessary function was also uh, was not working before, and I hope I uh, fixed many other things. Yes. Okay. Um, what about? Uh, I'm just asking. Uh, Compared to my knowledge of Wi-Fi, is there is this a master to slave like access point to to slave mode, or it's peer-to-peer uh, -peer like ad hoc, where you could uh, eventually do some kind of mesh networking between uh, between the, the, the nodes? So uh, the IEEE.4 have a star topology, or I want to a um, peer-to-peer topology um, to make some uh, routing, you need uh, RPL or the six low pen stand, uh, RC describe, uh, describe some mesh routing, but this is, uh, this is not uh, implemented and I think uh, there's no uh, practical relevance uh, to uh, use that. Okay. But you don't need an uh, access point. If I want to try your uh, low pan, um, is there any recommended list of hardware I need to buy? Yes, um, on the uh, project side, we have a list of uh, supported hardware. There's two IEEE.4 uh, receivers right now, mainline, but there are a lot of uh, non-mainline uh, drivers like Econotech, and there's uh, Econotech firmware, and uh, ATUSB is uh, too, um, currently not mainline, but uh, ATRFC uh, RF uh, 230, there, there's a mainline driver, and uh, some, some other unit. Um, here on the slide, uh, Here's the project si site on uh, SearchForge, and you can uh, visit it. And in the track wiki, there stands a lot of uh, hardware description. Yeah. Just a brief um, clarification when you said that you don't see any. Uh, advantage of doing mesh like uh, routing, I suppose you mean in the Linux side, but between the uh, Contiki nodes, I think they already implement uh, the RPL, so you, you actually can have mesh like uh, routing between the internet of I mean the sensors, and then finally when you get the the, the, the gateway, the, the, the Linux gateway, then you do normal routing. Yes. So, um, RPL is implemented in Contiki, yes, but uh, the RPL implementation by uh, uh, Tony Chino, uh, which uh, used Python and a lot of other things, um, that's very limited. And I didn't, I don't get it uh, one uh, right now with to talk with Contiki devices. And uh, yeah, they need some implementation work to get this. Uh, together with uh, Contiki. Okay. So thank you very much, Alexander. Vielen Dank. We have a five-minute break, and then we'll come back with some discussion on OAuth from Paul Fremantle.